British director Bernard Rose is still perhaps best known for his 1992 horror hit Candyman, but his eclectically scattershot CV includes working with Jim Henson on The Muppet Show, helming a couple of episodes of a softcore Playboy series, and directing an infamously outre video for Frankie Goes to Hollywood's hit Relax. Yet it was when Tolstoy became his muse that Rose really hit his stride, following his film of Anna Karenina with a series of increasingly adventurous adaptations, including Ivan's Ecstasy, Boxing Day, and my BFI player choice this week, The Kreutzer Sonata. <laughs> first fell in love with Tolstoy whilst researching his 1994 feature Immortal Beloved, in which Gary Oldman played Ludwig van Beethoven. Rose's research led him to Tolstoy's Kreutzer Sonata, a novella named after Beethoven's piece which Rose found really powerful and immediate. I started reading as much Tolstoy as I could, he said. His insights into basic problems of the human condition are extremely powerful and tireless. They're also all in the public domain, which made them all the more attractive to Rose, for whom low budgets have never been a problem. Set in contemporary LA, Rose's Kreutzer Sonata reunites the director with Danny Houston, who stars as the wealthy businessman Edgar. Edgar is married to Abby, played by Elizabeth Rome, a pianist with whom he once had an illicit affair. Now, as a wife and mother, Abby has become discontented, and so Edgar arranges a concert at which she will play the eponymous Beethoven piece. But to do this, she will need to spend long hours practicing with handsome violinist Aidan, played by Matthew Yang King. And aware of her former infidelity with him, Edgar starts to imagine that history may repeat itself. What follows is a descent into a very personal hell, a quagmire of jealousy, rage, and pornographic imaginings. It's intense fare, which is not for everyone. While Peter Bradshaw and The Guardian compared the Kreutzer Sonata favorably to the work of Michael Haneke and Chantal Ackerman, his opposite number in The Observer, Philip French, dismissed it as being without merit, despite a consistently and coldly erotic tone. What will you make of it? Mm -hmm. 